Okay, so now I'm going to talk about pushing information back into DIA and several different best practices, both front end and back end. Um, so again, just sound like a broken record. Uh, there's the sale, which is the entire transaction, and then there's the steps of that sale, the quote, the order, the pick, the pack, the ship, and so on. Um, so if I go back to uh, get a sale, and if you haven't watched the previous videos, um, I would suggest you do before looking at this one. I'll just go and get a sale ID now. Um, so if I get this sale ID, um, big long sale here, and if I again go and put this request just over here, and send, we'll get the same key information back there. Now, in terms of sending a sale into DIA, there is a post command, just like there's a get command. Now, there's an important consideration here, and this is something that has changed quite recently. So, with the post, you post in basically step by step. So, where you can do a get command, and for example, here I've got 600 and something lines with all the products, all the fulfillments, and everything else. You can't push that way. The main reason being, there's so much logic behind the scenes because Deer's a perpetual inventory system that one line missing in a 600 line API would cause chaos and could break the database. So in the front end, for example, just to show you here, um, I let's say I have a sale, so let's take this one here, which is ordering. So I've got a sale that has no lines or anything on it. I've just put the customer information here at the top. Um, if I go now and uh, say that I want to, uh, let's just have a quick look, just sell some of these for a moment um, and authorize this. Now I'm limited in the UI by what I can do. So I didn't actually show it there, but I couldn't pick obviously before I had something on an order. I can't pack now until I've picked. There's also other considerations like you can't pack what you haven't picked. So if I pick some bottle caps but try and pack some bottles, I can't do that. Um, there's all kinds of different considerations here, um, as well as things like back orders, cloned orders, and, and, and everything else. So basically what the user does, in case you're not kind of familiar with the front end of Deer, they'll put an order in, uh, they'll go to here, and they'll uh, auto pick, usually, um, or they may go and scan to pick or similar, but they'll they'll tell the system what they've picked. Um, then they'll confirm that it's packed and potentially if it's going with a couple of different couriers or two different consignments or similar, it can go in here. Um, and then finally, they'll go and ship and put some tracking information in. Um, now, with the DIA calls, there's a sale call that will put the top information into so the customer, the address, the warehouse and all of that. Uh, there is then sale order which will um, send in the lines of information and the products that are involved. Uh, and then there's actually a couple of different calls depending on your fulfillment logic. So you can send in a pick, send in a pack, send in a ship. There's some business reasons why you would do that, say to like confirm you've picked the products and then separately the next day confirm they've shipped out. Uh, alternatively, you can use sale fulfillment to send all of those in at once if you want to pick pack ship because it's kind of one part of the process. You can't send the sale header, the lines, the pick, the pack all in one call um, because there's been some chaos caused by doing that basically. So it's a, it's a couple of different calls. Um, the first one will give you the ID. The next ones you just need to use that ID and update. So to show you what I mean here, um, if we go to, um, let's say, um, a, actually, let me just look at one thing here. Um, so I'll just show you here. If we go into uh, sale and then sale order. So you'll see here the sale order call has a sale ID, um, memo status, and then a bunch of lines, basically the products that are on the order. Uh, the sale uh, call and would look separately at a post um, has the customer, the product, uh, the customer, the warehouse, the location, the tax rule, the address, and so on. So sale first, then order, then potentially fulfillment or pick, pack, ship, depending on your process. So uh, the easiest way to, to kind of test this or do this. Um, first of all, just for concept is actually to grab an existing order 
and to basically reverse engineer it. Two ways of doing that. Um, we can either get um, the sale order to get like the lines examples, or what I find easier is just to get the entire sale and just pull out what we need. So uh, if we um, get the sale here, oh, we actually, which we actually just did before, I'll run it again. We get all that information. We've already got it over on this side. So if I copy paste this and then instead say that I want to post a sale, uh, then in my body here, so I'm just sending this up in JSON. Um, now I don't need all of this information. So this is the 600 and something lines that have the whole order, the whole quote, the whole pick, the whole pack, the ship and so on. So the first thing to note is I definitely don't need anything from quote down. I don't need to send the order information in. I don't need to send the fulfillments and anything else. This is just for example sake. Obviously you would normally generate this code from your warehouse system or your portal system or whatever. Uh, but this is just to show logic. Now a whole bunch of these other stages I don't need either. Uh, these are all documented in the API, um, in the document information here. Um, I just know some of these, so I'll just take some of these out just to show um, how simple pushing an order can be. So, in fact, I can get rid of almost all of this. So we'll send a sales rep, uh, a customer reference, a note. We don't need to send in... Um, sales order date, we can send it in, but otherwise it was assumed today. Uh, we need a location, a tier, a tax rule, terms, they're all required anyway. Uh, we don't need shipping notes because we don't have any. And I'll keep the rest of the information. Now, uh, I won't send an ID because we're not looking to update an existing sale, like that's what came out when we... Now, on the IDs, this is important. So we don't want to use a sale ID because we're not updating an existing sale. Um, we want to create a new one. This ID would be used, and you'll see this in a little bit. This will be used if you wanted to send in order lines for an existing sale or a pick for an existing sale or similar. Uh, now, in terms of customer, um, the customer needs to exist in the system. You don't actually have to have the ID because it will associate by customer name. So I can take this ID out knowing that it will associate to Bob the Builder. Um, that said, if you don't have the customer in the system, you will need to create them before you create the sale. Uh, I won't go through in this video um, creating a customer, but it's basically an equivalent post um, post call for a uh, customer. And again, in the API documents, there's the fields that you need, like name and contact and address and so on and so forth. Um, so with all that said, now I've got my 40 line uh, post as opposed to the, the 600 lines I pulled out. Um, hit send, you should hopefully get a response back with a whole bunch of information that will look like the previous call that came back the other way. Um, so it will include all the information like we did for the get call when we got a particular ID. Um, it will also have an ID in it. So effectively the first line that is returned just here is now the ID of this new sale. So if I was to actually further down, I should see, so, so notice that the sales order dates filled out, the modified dates filled out now. Um, I should have, yep, just here, a sales order number. So if I now go and search, there's that sales order number and I've got a sale in the system ready to have lines added to it, essentially. So uh, that's the sale header that I've basically done there, um, and the order lines will be what I post in next. So um, that's usually what you would want to get an order up and running. Then, depending on your process, you would post in the pick or the pack or the full fulfillment all in one. We'll talk about that in two following videos. Um, the most important thing here is just the, the get commands that you can do for searching things. Ooh. Downside of having shared partner logons. I've been kicked out, I think. Let me just pause. There we go. Uh, so there's no order lines or anything, but if we go at the top, we've got all the key information here. Um, and this will match. So 12 Blue Street, 12 Blue Street, um, fake email addresses and phone numbers, same here as well. 
So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, in the next and last video, we'll talk about pushing in uh, picks and packs and ships and so on.